Yeah, okay, you feel good because you kept the law. You feel good because you kept the law. I got to go to church and I just got to back. And that my week ain't going to be right if I ain't go to church. Well, I wouldn't say that. You, you see how we, let's get, we become legalists and don't even realize it. I'm going to church because I love God and I got to meet him there. And I got I to gotta make my supply and I got to feel the energy from the other believers. I'm going to give something, but I'm going to get something. I ain't going because it's out of obligation. I want to be in the house of God. I'm not picking up my Bible because the Holy Spirit got a baseball bat waiting to hit me upside the head if I don't read it. I pick my Bible up because that's life. And I need the life source flowing in me so it can flow through me. Yes. Not out of religious duty, out of my love affair for the Father. Come on, Pastor. Because I love him, I don't want to be without him. Yes. Not that he mad at me because I don't read my Bible. That's not going to hurt him. That's going to hurt me. Yes. Because I'm going to be the one born of knowledge. Yes. And I'm not going to know what's rightfully mine because I won't get in the will and test them. Amen. That's <sighs> good, Pastor. People don't even know the will. Yep. You've been left the kingdom and don't even realize it. And you're out here working, trying to make something happen that has already happened. But because you won't read the book and let the Holy Spirit breathe on it, you don't even know what's yours. So I wish these people that, that teach grace would teach it the right way. Instead of just throwing all this crazy stuff out there. Because, baby, if you really got the Holy Spirit, you're not going to want to sin. And you're not going to be practicing sin. And even when you make a mistake, you're going to be quick to repent. Because you don't want nothing to separate you from the love of God. Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall come persecution, distress, famine, peril, sword, nakedness, principality, things, present things. He said, none of these things going to separate us from the love of God. You, you don't want your missing the mark to make you feel condemned where you don't have confidence to approach God. Right. Mm. Mm. See, that's what happens when we miss the mark. The sin, see, people got categories of sin. See, sin means to miss the mark. If I'm at the range shooting and I don't hit the target, guess what? That's considered sin. I missed the mark. And so when we say we sin, we say we missed the mark. We didn't measure up to what God had for our life. Yeah. And so what happened? We end up feeling condemned. And so we don't have confidence to approach God the way we want to approach him as a son because we beat ourselves up. So why would you want to do something that's going to make you feel that bad? Amen. And take away your confidence. The Bible says cast not away your confidence because it has great recompense of reward. You will lose your rewards when you don't have confidence. And you lose your confidence when you keep indulging in things that's not God. Y'all making me work for this. I got all over in John 5. Verse 37. Jesus says, and the Father who sent who? Me. 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 He has testified of me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you, <laughs> you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. His, his form. When he say his form, you haven't seen him in his totality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen the fullness of God. You've seen the facets of God that God has revealed to you, but you have not seen the fullness of God. Yes. And then he says, you do not have his word abiding in you. Now, how did Jesus give them a test and say, you don't have his word? Listen to what he said. He said, you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe him who he sent. If you got all this word in you that you say you possess, then you will believe on the one that he sent. You will know I, you, your word in you will bear witness to the word that's before you. People get deceived by Jim Jones and a lot of these preachers today because they don't have a word in him. See, you have to have something in you to test and prove what's before you. People say, try the spirit by the spirit. That's not what the scriptures say. That's what church say. The, the scriptures say, try the spirit to see whether it be of God. How do I try the spirit that's before me? I, I try it by seeing if it's connected with what's in me. 
If there's an uneasiness with, with this spirit, with my spirit, then it's not his spirit. So Jesus said, you don't even have the word in you like you think you do, because if you did, you would identify with That's the right. word that is before you. That's right. 39. And then he gets deeper in their stuff. He said, you search the scriptures. Here we go again, yeah. Sister Kim. Rules and regulations. Reading the, reading the Torah. Reading the Tanakh. Reading the Tammu. You search the scriptures. And what Jesus said about that? He said, because you think that in them you have eternal life. You think because you're reading and searching and you have understanding of who he read terms and, and different who read scripture that you're going to have eternal life. You think that. But what did he say? He said, it is these that testify about me. The, the written is only testifying about the present. Mm. That's good. <laughs> you so busy searching that you can't see. Mm. Oh, God, help us, Holy Ghost. Yeah. You so busy searching, you can't see. Yes. You can't perceive. You, you can't even understand what is in your midst because you're so busy searching to be deep. That you stuck in your search, but you can't see what's before you. Mm, Stop mm, searching so hard that you can't see. Mm. See, sometimes you can search so hard that you can't see truth. Yeah. I'm so going to let that marinate. Mm. But some of y'all missing it. These were scholars. These were Sadducees. They were Pharisees. Right. They, they, they was different councils. They, they, they prided themselves on knowing the scripture. They prided themselves on keeping the ceremonies and right. doing all the outward stuff. Right. But now God himself is in the midst. And he said, you search the scriptures, but the scriptures only says testifying about me. Yeah. Everything from Genesis to where we are now is about me. But you're blinded to it because of your pursuit of knowledge and not your pursuit of re relationship. Yeah. Revelation should never supersede relationship. Yes. Nice. Some of y'all might want to write that down. Yeah, Revelation should yeah. never supersede relationship. Right. It is in him that I live, yeah. move, and yeah. Yeah. it's not in my revelation. Yeah. It's in my Relationships. Are y'all getting this? Yes. My God, this is blessing. <laughs> Where am I? 39? Let me read that. That's a good one there. He said, you search the scriptures because you think in them that you have eternal life. He said, it is these that testify about me. Now, for this, it's the kicker here. He said, and you are unwilling to come to me. So that you may have life. Mm. You're in the word, but you wow. still don't have life because you are unwilling to come to me. Wow. Because the life is not on the pages. The life is in the person. Yes. And so you are a dying here because you're reading and you're hearing, but you will not come to the one that gives life. Come on, fast. Jesus busted them up. That was a room full of preachers he was talking to. He wasn't talking to the lay people. He's talking to the leadership of Israel. He, he said, huh? He said, you don't have no eternal life because you can't perceive who's really before you. Oh, Jesus. Are y'all reading this? Yes. He, he said, you are unwilling to come to me so that you may have life. Yes. So what is he saying? If you don't get out of the book and come to the one that is the book, then you're dying. The only way you're going to have life is you have to embrace the living one. Mm. The bread that came down from heaven. Yes. The living bread. Mm. And there are a lot of people that will embrace the law, but they won't embrace the spirit. That's right. Yeah. And they think they're alive. You can see them on TV. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can see them. That's the whole thing. John McArthur, that strange fire mess that he's preaching, and look at him. He looked like he's a corpse. There is no life in him. He's a scholar of scholars. He's a teacher of teacher, but he's teaching out of his head and not out of his, out of his well. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The, the Holy Spirit going to come up out of you come and begin now. to do the work. Come not on, out of your head, you. out of your belly. Yes. You got to drop down from your head to your belly. Where the spirit is. Come on. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Me Come on, Pastor. And we got all these dried up preachers preaching the law, but there's no anointing, and it will never activate my life because yes. there's no spirit with it. Yes. Dry it up, look like they need to just put them on in the coffin and put them in the ground, cover them up. Why? Because there is no life. Just a bunch of information that they got out of cemetery. I mean, seminary school. No life. 
And that's what they teach you in seminary. They teach you how to hope. They teach you how to get the people stirred up. Yes. How to for the when the tear the organ to hit it. They teach you how to raise the offering. They teach you how to cater to the emotions of people, but they don't teach you how to be led by the Spirit of God. That's why I thank God for more than conference college because it's a spirit led college. Amen. Where they teach you to get to know the person of the Holy Spirit. They teach you that it's not about what you've learned. It's about Him working in you and through you. It's not just enough to inquire knowledge. Amen. That's right. I've been in Proverbs since we've been on this fast, among other books, but I think it was Proverbs chapter 2 where it was talking about knowledge resides in the soul, in the head. But it said wisdom is in the heart. 